I recently returned to the classroom and I can tell you where things are absolutely different than they were when I was in the room full time. For the last three years, I have been an academic interventionist and boy, have things changed. I am in a different area, a completely different location, a completely different state, as a matter of fact. And so I was really shocked at how the culture and climate is completely different than what I am used to. But I want to talk today about the importance of classroom management strategies. If you don't have some classroom management strategies, let me just tell you this from the jump. You are destined to fail. You are going to have to have some classroom management strategies. You're going to have to have a plan already in place and set for you when you first walk back into your classroom. Uh, as for me, I have, I'm a veteran teacher. I've been teaching for over 20 something years. So I do know a thing or two about how to handle students. But when you walk into an area that's completely new and the students are completely different, then you have to do some revamping. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. Hi, just in case you don't know who you are, I'm the one that shields and this is 2Q Classroom. And we're talking about some strategies that you must use and why they are important in your classroom. Number one, your students can't have downtime. I went back to school this year. And of course, like I said, I've been teaching for several years and I was shocked that Students cannot have downtime. I mean, what? You have to plan, plan, plan. Failing to plan is planning to fail. You absolutely have to have something for them to do almost every minute that they're in your room. Because if you don't give them something to do, I promise you they have something for you to do, which is keep up with them. They have plans of their own. This set of students that I have have shown me what it means to be disrespectful but i will say this i think it's because they have not had an actual teacher for the last several years uh from my understanding the teachers have either quit or they couldn't find somebody it's a very small school they've had subs they've had um virtual learning they have not just been in a classroom in a classroom with a certified teacher for at least the last two years and before that you know they were in the middle of the pandemic and so they were doing a lot of supposedly online learning i don't think it was taking place but i will say this so they've gotten used to sort of being lax playing so it is vital that they have something to do every minute and as a new teacher whether you wear what i mean is as a new teacher in that district or as a new teacher to um that grade level or a new teacher to that school or first year teacher if that is you you have to have plan ahead for them to have something to do and i tell you what steve covey's book the seven habits of a highly effective person about being proactive beginning with the end in mind you have to know at the beginning what you want your ending to be and plan ahead for it go over in your mind every scenario that your students can come up with i promise you you're still gonna miss some but you have to be prepared for every little thing because, like I said, they're gonna come up with some things for you to do, and that one of those big, one of the biggest things is to monitor them and their behavior. The next thing I'm going to say is make sure that you stand firm on what your rules and regulations are. My goodness, this year I've had to go over my rules several times. I've had to stop and say, okay, let's review the rules. Let's review the rules. And they are like, oh, no, we're reviewing the rules. I'm so sick of reviewing the rules. But um, you have to constantly review the rules because if you want them to learn them, if you want to show them that it's going to be your way and not theirs, then you must review the rules. Go over the rules, go over the rules, go over the rules. Repetition, repetition, repetition. As Harry Wong said in the first days of school, you set the expectations from day one. You show them what you will and will not accept as behavior. You continuously reinforce it, reinforce it, reinforce it. I came into a new position and I thought because I was leaving the elementary school and because it was such a small school, I wouldn't have to constantly go over the rules. I went over the rules. I enforced the rules, but then they have gone off, off, off the, I don't even know, off the ledge. If we have a break holiday, if we have a day out for weather, whatever it is, they are revert back to old behavior. But you have to redirect them back again to what is acceptable for you. 
And I think with me, what I've noticed over the years is once I am at a school district and I'm there for more than a short period of time, then my students become comfortable with me. They know what to expect and the behavior is better. But because I'm new, I have to constantly reinforce rules and it's just important that I establish what I will and will not accept. That is a part of good classroom management. Another thing I'm going to tell you with trying to make sure that you have good classroom management is that you keep up with who. For me, uh, who does what? And what I say to them, it's important to learn your students because with me, it's been difficult to learn my students because, like I said, I have new students. They have names. They're beautiful names, but they're names I haven't heard before. I come from a different state, a different area, and so I'm used to different names. And so they, they have names I haven't heard of before. And so it's taken me a while to get to know them. It's taken me a while to learn their names. And this is what I want to tell you guys to do. Have a seating chart. Have a way that you can figure out who is who from the beginning. So a seating chart will help to save your life. It's helped to save mine, huh? allow it to save yours. But have some kind of system in place for learning your student's name. And like I said, I've noticed that a seating chart is the best thing ever. So try using that. You have to get to be friends with your administration because you're going to have to lean on them. You are new. You don't have any new friendships or, or relationships built already with your um uh, with your co-teachers, you don't have a relationship built yet with your parents, and so you have to become friends with your administration. And even if you have been there for a long period of time, it's very important that you build that relationship with your administrators. You know what they expect, you know what you can do and what you cannot do. Become familiar with your district policies and go from there. But it's imperative that you have good classroom management strategies. Another key thing that you're going to have to do is you're going to have to put some systems in place. I confess, I have always had systems. I've always used systems. This year, I have more kids than I've ever had. And it has become a problem with trying to get their papers graded and back to them. I have a system, but I'm having to revamp my system. But make sure you have a system in place to help you take up papers, grade papers. When you're going to get papers back, when you're going to give tests, have your systems in place. And other system I'm going to tell you to have in place, have your support system in place. You are going to need it. And I know I'm talking from a perspective of somebody who's new to teaching, even though I'm not because I am a veteran teacher. I'm at, as I love to tell everybody, I'm near the end of my career, not the beginning. You are going to need that support. You are going to need somebody that you can lean on, somebody that you can talk to, somebody that can understand, that can help you out to give you those few minutes of downtime and let you do something like just take a nap. So make sure that you have yourself together and that you have established an effective way to manage your class. I thank you guys so much for listening. This has been the one she took your classroom. I'll see you guys in the next video.